Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the It's the Pitchers podcast. I'm your host, Max Colville. This is episode 166, and we're in a new era for the It's the Pitchers podcast. Today, I am joined with my co-host, Evan Crean. Hi, Evan. Hey, Max. How's it going? Good, good. I'm I'm excited for this 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 new era of uh, podcasts business if you if you will business pleasure <laughs> yeah um and uh we we have some ideas in the future of uh people we want to have on and we're excited about um where the podcast is going um certainly um, we have plenty of th- things to talk about and um it helps that, that evan and i already have a pretty good rapport so uh we'll we'll, we'll make sure to have some uh, great and informative conversations yeah for sure do you want to jump right into the news, Evan, or do you, is there something you want to bring up beforehand? No, let's just, let's jump right into the news. I mean, like, at the top of the list here is you know my favorite decade for movies, right? The eighties. <laughs> yeah, right. The, the the book you wrote. Um, so I I figured like this was going to be like something that you knew a lot of the topics of, and on the newsletter I just wrote uh, a quick piece on uh every every movie or tv show that's hot right now is uh a remake or revival from the 80s whether it be um the fx show shogun which is a revival of a 1980s show some people they they claim it's just another adaptation of the novel so (laughs) be that as it may um Mm -hmm. there's a new adaptation of roadhouse um ghostbusters has a new movie out not necessarily the ghostbusters original reboot but a new story in the ghostbusters universe that's just crazy mm-hmm. out there um evan do you have nostalgia for the, uh, any of these properties well i mean i love ghostbusters the first and second ghostbusters i watched those a ton when i was a kid and for some reason i think my cousin had ghostbusters 2 on vhs so I ended up watching that quite a bit at one point i had seen it will make more than the first one um but yeah i love roadhouse patrick swayze uh, the original patrick swayze film i see beetlejuice is in here too that's another one of my favorites from that era so i definitely love all those movies i don't know how excited i am for sequels i mean that everyone's been (laughs) clamoring for another ghostbusters where we bring back bill murray and dan Aykroyd and the original crew but i don't know i feel like that time for me has passed like i would have loved to see one of those movies I don't know, 20, 25 years ago. I just don't know how excited I am now to to bring everybody back. I I saw part of the, what what was the last one? Ghostbusters Afterlife. Was that the name of it? Yeah. Yeah. I saw part of that one on TV one day and I was like, eh, I don't know. This isn't really hooking me. So I, I feel less excited for that sequel. The similar feeling of Beetlejuice. You know, I love the movie, but I, do I need a sequel now? Like 30 years later? I don't know. I, I I think of these films, Roadhouse was what I was most excited about because as much as I enjoy the Patrick Swayze version, I think there were definitely opportunities to um, do something new or do something fun, which I think they did. And I, I talked about it last week on Spoiler Pete's Theater, um, you know, like a full review of it. But basically, I, I enjoyed Road the new Roadhouse with Jake Gyllenhaal, I think. You know, they went some different places and it's fun. It's dumb fun, but still <laughs> it's fun nonetheless. <laughs> How about you? Right. I mean, I mean, like if you're going to like riff on a movie that's known for being kind of dumb fun, then you might as well go that way. Um, yeah. L- like you, I haven't really seen um, the Ghostbusters on um, New Era, if you will. They have a New Era themselves um, with having Paul Rudd involved. But um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like. That franchise, I, it's probably like not everybody who loves the Ghostbusters is this way, right, Evan? But like how right. like when you read about it, they've kind of disowned the the female Ghostbusters movie, and it's like an also ran, and I I just feel kind of ick about that whole situation. Yeah, uh, so. yeah, I don't like that misogyny and that kind of crap. It it bothers me. I mean, look, I was not a fan of the that Ghost. The tw- was it twenty six. When the hell did that one come out? 2014, 2016, that Ghostbusters? I think so. Um, yeah, 2016. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that one, but I just didn't think it was very good. You know, it, I, I wanted it to be good. And I remember when we reviewed it on Spoiler Piece being like, 
I really wanted this movie to be good. I really wanted to like it. Like I wasn't coming in poo-pooing it like so many people were, or just not liking it on the basis of like, oh, I'm mad that there's girl Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I right. really wanted it to be good and was really bummed that it was not good. So right, it's just a bad movie because it's a bad movie, will. not ne- not necessarily because there's women in 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 the title roles exactly yeah so i don't know I, I wish i could be more excited about these ghostbuster sequels i guess i should get around to seeing afterlife now that you know frozen empire is out and maybe get caught up and see if i enjoy them or if i just still think they're needless sequels <laughs> yeah i think i saw like afterlife is on hulu or something so it's like really accessible these days but mm-hmm. i just i i haven't seen it either um as from for the other ones like I haven't seen neither Roadhouse movie and oh, I, Max, you're missing out, man. Yeah. <laughs> Every day I think to myself, today's the day I'm going to watch the Patrick Swayze Roadhouse movie. <laughs> and, and like, I love dirty dancing. So like, I I'm a fan of Patrick Swayze. So, um, I, I it sounds like it'd be my bag. I, I think, I think if you enjoy a kind of dumb, fun action movie, eighties, you know, early nineties era, cause it came out in like 89, I think. The original roadhouse so if that's if you like a movie of that era i feel like you'd probably enjoy roadhouse but you, you know you watch it you don't take it too seriously and i think that's the best way to enjoy a movie as silly as like here's a guy who's a professional bouncer that they hire to you know clean up this rough and tumble bar which is part of a rough and tumble corrupt kind of town yeah because it, it, it's funny it, the, there's this label I'm not sure how familiar you are of, I'm not going to take it for granted but there's a, a physical media release label called Vinegar Syndrome and they're known for their, oh yeah like, I've heard of them alright yeah they're kind of known for their like off kilter kind of like almost so bad they're good movies and they have mm. the license to Roadhouse. So oh, do I'm they? Like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like um, maybe this, this would be interesting they like released a 4k of it last year or something Oh, did they? Um, now I'm gonna have to check this out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, the the biggest release that I got from them, and I haven't watched it yet, was um, they also did, um, what's that? Oh, what's that movie that I'm thinking of? Um, not striptease. Um, Showgirls. Did they yeah, Showgirls. Show Girls? That's it. Yeah, they released Showgirls, and that was like I was oh, like, nice. oh, this is such a perfect movie for them to do a 4K like nice release for. So. Nice. Um, I'm looking forward to eventually checking those movies out and um, having a good amount of fun with them. Um, but Evan, that's not just like the only 80s thing that is coming back. Also, the never ending story is apparently coming uh, back. Over what? The <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> I, I read this the other day and I was like, it's that's like a franchise that i feel you know in the title it says that it's never ending but yeah (laughs) it's like yeah yeah, what the hell (laughs) i thought it was well tread i never saw any of the sequels i've just seen the first never ending story and i really like the never ending story i think that's a really good movie and i think underrated (laughs) i don't feel a lot of people like talk about how much they like it but we rewatched it a while back on spoiler piece and i was like damn this is a good movie (laughs) Yeah, like I, I remember, so what well, Shannon and I, uh, we we had uh, the never ending story theme song for our like introdu- uh, introduction song for at the oh nice. Period. I was That's just a like good we, one. we we yeah we like I unironically like love the never ending <laughs> story uh, theme song. So it's good. It's a good theme song. Um, but like for me, it was funny, Evan. Like I had a lot of history of maybe the second movie for a long time and like it wasn't really as familiar with the first one but then i then i saw the first one and enjoyed it so again i don't know what what we need to to go back to that well for (laughs) i don't know i hate to sound like like that guy i'm not trying to be that guy where i'm like we can't remake anything or we can't i'm just like i don't know why some of these movies they're good leave them alone remake stuff that was bad (laughs) Right. I'm, yeah. I mean, like some of this stuff doesn't need to be retread. Uh, I don't know. Like you would think like maybe never ending story would have been like sooner because they would have been like riding the fantasy coattails of like Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter. That was like when yeah. uh, the fantasy was really big. Yeah. 
agreed and and, Lord, and game of thrones i feel like that right. we're kind of over that hill at this point like yeah we got a new harry potter coming out at some point yeah we got a game of thrones prequel yeah we've got the lord of the rings show on amazon but i i don't know if they're pulling the same kind of numbers at least i don't hear people talking about them in our circles as much as i did when i feel like game of thrones was kind of at its peak yeah, it's it's funny that we mentioned even Game of Thrones this weekend because one of the big TV shows that came out was uh, an adaptation of the Three Body Problem, this like um, well known science fiction novel, and uh, the the guys who responsible for Game of Thrones are the showrunners on it. So, um, oh okay, yeah, it's their new project. Netflix gave them tons of money, <laughs> like you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see. I I I've heard some people check in over the weekend. I was like, ah, how how the how's everybody liking it? And you know, it's still early. Um, other news we got, which was pretty much not a surprise for anybody who was watching release dates, um, mm-hmm. that uh, the prequel to Mad Max Fury Road, Furiosa, Mad Max Saga, has been confirmed to premiere at the con film festival out of competition and uh it's a similar mm. spot to what fury road did years ago made a big splash before uh coming out and uh yeah i'm sure hope, hope i i hope it's good i um john Me and too. i had talked about it a lot evan and like it's kind of hard to capture that lightning in a bottle again yeah because i feel like mad max was really I don't want to say game changer, but it kind of was. It was a movie that kind of struck people by surprise in a way that they weren't expecting. You know, like this really hyper stylized, really tense, you know, balls to the wall kind of action movie that also looked really good and had really amazing art direction. So, yeah, I'm with you, with you guys on that. I'm not really sure how they do that again, but I guess... I'm willing to see it. I'm willing to see them try. <laughs> yeah, we like. Um, what was I? What was I thinking when I saw that movie? No, I was blown away when I first saw it. Oh, that's what I wanted to add is that it, it certainly helped that uh, Charlize Theron like made one of the most iconic of uh, female heroes. You know, this side of Ripley, I, I think she, while not up to that same level, um, she mm-hmm. she's close. Um, certainly a uh, instantly beloved character yeah for sure and whether or not anya taylor joy can can do the part justice we'll see i mean i think she, she's a pretty talented actor i mean like certainly um people will point to her beauty and say yeah you know that that certainly doesn't hurt but you know i i really enjoyed her in the um the chess series i, I ended up watching a lot of that and certainly that oh, was queen's how, gambit yeah yeah that's how more people got to know her. Um, so that was a good show. We'll I, yeah, I, I think she definitely has more than just being like you know a, a beautiful woman. You know, she's she's. I think she's talented. Um, this is certainly going to test her mm-hmm. being out, being out in the, the, the desert and doing these Mad Max roles mm-hmm. as they do, and it will test Chris Hemsworth too. I'm sure. Um, it's funny to see him though in that makeup because at first you're like, is that really Chris Hemsworth? And they did a good job with that. I don't think I've seen any photos of this. Now I'm gonna have to look him up and see what he looks like. Yeah. Um, why? Why you do that? Because because looking at photos isn't great <laughs> radio, as you know. Oh yeah, um, totally. Oh okay. Yeah, he kind of looks like out of shape Thor in this. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, he got caught in a like. I think he borrowed Lee Pace's vest from the fall, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a movie that needs to be put out on physical media again. Or any uh, media. Yes. It's very hard to see. It is. It's very it's sorry for the tangent, but it really is a movie that I've desperately wanted to rewatch and it's not available anywhere in the any places you can't find it. It is absurdly expensive to buy. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a movie that uh, needs a real appraisal worthy of getting it available for people to watch. Yep. Um, and then finally, I, I thought this was interesting, Evan. Um, it seems that director Ryan Coogler, who is responsible for such hits as Black Panther and Creed, um, has uh, set up a new movie with uh, his 
favorite co-star, a favorite uh, lead actor, Michael B. Jordan, and it's set for 2025. We don't know necessarily um, that much about the film, but um, I want to take this opportunity, I guess, to see. Uh, are, are you personally excited about another Ryan Coogler film? Oh hell yeah, I I love Ryan Coogler. Uh, of his movies I've seen, uh, you know, Creed, Black Panther. Uh, he's a great fucking director. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm psyched for another team up with um with Michael B. Jordan, who I also love. I would I I'm I'm curious to see what they want to do. Is it gonna be like action? Is it gonna be drama? Like what what are they gonna do with their next outing together? It was funny. I was talking to somebody once and they were like, Why does he go by Michael B. Jordan? And I'm like, Well, think about it for a second. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's someone else you know that's famous with the name michael jordan <laughs> right <laughs> uh, no, that was what about funny. you how are you um, feeling about yeah, this oh yeah no I, I i enjoy all his movies i mean like wakanda forever was kind of hamstrung by whatever mcu-ness was going on um and of course losing the great chadwick boseman um but yeah yeah that was I, a tough thing to deal with i th- i personally thought they handled it quite well uh you know writing him out of the story but it's a tough tough thing for them to have had to deal with yeah his absence is definitely felt and i i, I get that they don't really try to like move on fully and ignore him obviously there's the movie starts with a funeral procession but um yeah it's it's still tough to continue with a of a actor with that kind of magnitude. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So Evan and I kind of talked about what we were gonna do for our first feature. We we toyed with uh, some ideas of the films coming out. Um, first, we looked at um, Godzilla because uh, there, there's some there's a Godzilla movie coming out, and and certainly that would have been fun on the heels of um, uh, the great. Godzilla minus zero release and everything like that and and see how the American version kind of does. Um, but we'll save that for another time. Instead, we are going to focus on the films of Dev Patel, an actor that, you know, has just in- continued to impress me personally uh, throughout mm-hmm. the years. Um, certainly, you, you see these movies, Evan, that like are kind of abnormal um certainly like i think of the movie like the artist right those those actors were on top of the world and you know they've done work but it's like they you don't care too much about what they're doing internationally now they're they're kind of back to their own country of france i think right. was uh, mm-hmm. um the artist actors and so it'd be one thing for dev patel to come out into the world and make this splash and slum dog millionaire and you know quietly be forgotten but he has certainly stood the test of time he's a fantastic actor and he's had quite a bit of uh great roles to his name yeah a diversity of roles i would say too he's not doing the same thing over and over again which i think is you know any great actor he's like to see them in all different kinds of parts and i think he's shown that he's pretty versatile yeah, and I don't I don't know if he if he necessarily has trouble getting roles, but um, now he has taken the reins into his own hands with his di- directorial debut, uh, Monkey Man, that uh, had its premiere at South by Southwest recently. And um, from what I saw with the, the reviews, they were pretty promising. You know, um, the typical first movie jitters, and um, offers great promise into uh, his future directorial work um i for one can't wait to see it uh but um i'm glad that he is even branching out into directorial um spaces and um you know it seems like he's a versatile actor that will be with us for a long time yeah um so slumdog millionaire was um you know evan i loved that movie when it came out but in preparation of doing this podcast, I had to like kind of like do some research on the movie again because I was like, it has been a while. Um, yeah, 
it did come out in what 2008 or or two, it won best picture in 2008 right yeah it was like this big splash you know it's a, it's a movie that makes everybody feel good certainly um with the traditional uh song and dance at the end um mm-hmm. that was that famously uh the song jai ho which would go on to win uh best original song at the oscars i think the movie ended up winning eight oscars total um when i was doing my research including best picture and best director for danny boyle um it was now if you watch the movie it kind of seems quaint because like it's based off this idea that Deb Patel's character is on a Indian version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I know like you might watch that show nowadays, or like I see people probably coming to it and be like, What's the, what's this show? Not knowing that Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was this humongous show. I mean, it, worldwide. I, it was a really big hair for a while. Yeah, it definitely was. Did you, did you have fond memories of watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Evan? Was that something that you caught? <laughs> I feel like it was such a, cu- a cultural like touchstone for a while. It was like, you know, Regis Philbin and who wants to be a millionaire and thinking of like, Oh, final answer, you know, <laughs> like in that right. like, pause and that like tension of waiting to see if they got it to move on to the next round. Uh, right, I feel like, like they, okay. they, they, no, I was going to say like, like they have the 50, 50, they have a phone, a friend, you know, a lot of, Oh uh, yeah. The lifelines. <laughs> yeah fun extras but uh, on a similar tangent I, w- I was thinking to myself what kind of game show that I w- i'd ever want to be on and it had to be one that wasn't super difficult so like i love prices right i've always enjoyed that program so that'd be like number one but then i was like deal or no deal is like complete luck it's like you don't have to do like any physical challenges like screw survivor or or the traders <laughs> which is the new hotness i just yeah, you know, let me pick some suitcases. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I would say of any game show, I've I've always wanted to be on Jeopardy. I, it's not a, not an easy game show to be on. It's actually quite difficult no. to qualify for Jeopardy, but uh, that would be my show of choice. I think. Yeah, that that is a good one. Um, did uh, yeah, there was a movie that came out on hulu last year that was kind of similar to jeopardy which is like quiz lady i don't know if you caught up with that one i didn't uh, actually but it th- seemed like i would enjoy funny. it yes yeah, so sandra O oh and aquafina and that one's on hulu um yeah it's a cute little movie but um back to dev patel and like the story is like he's doing really well on this um who wants to be a millionaire game show and mm-hmm. The, the host of the show are like how could this like slum kid know all these like really difficult answers and they like arrest him and say like he's cheating and i guess he recounts his story of his life and that explains how he knew these individual answers so um it's a, it's a very clever kind of hook to bring you into this story yeah for sure um, yeah um let's see so yeah i, I like slumdog millionaire i was as i was kind of thinking back on it i was a little bit late to see it i didn't see it like right in 2008 when a lot of people did i saw it i don't know probably within the last like five or so years <laughs> oh all right then you've probably but, seen it more recently than i have yeah yeah so i remember thinking you know it's a little bit predictable when i finally got around to seeing it but i see why people enjoyed it so much it is a really great rags to riches story and personally i'm a big fan of danny boyle as a director so i was i enjoyed how he told this story specifically i think dev fatel is great i think he gives a really earnest performance in this and that was kind of like earnest is a word i feel like i kept coming back to as i was you know thinking about this episode and looking back at some of his performances i feel like he's a very earnest performer and that's what i like about him um in his roles that i've seen <laughs> so i think yeah he, he plays to that strength it's funny that you mentioned danny boyle and like i remember i saw uh, another film podcast which we've mentioned before here um the blank check podcast did a whole series on danny boyle i'm sure i'm sure they did some dog millionaire but i was listening to their steve jobs one because I'm, I'm a big fan of that one even though like you know some people some people like it some people don't um yeah but uh he he has 
a very interesting career, very varied career. And like, he, it's nice to see that like, for the most part, he doesn't do the same thing twice. Um, mm-hmm. There was even yep. recently we talked about um, Sunshine when we were talking about Alex Garland, even two episodes ago. Oh, yeah. That movie was so good. Um, yeah, I love but, Sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a great movie um now 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 with like lots of future oscar winners um I think oh yeah for... that's a jam-packed cast probably one of the best casts that i can think of in a movie where it's like oh my god all these people just blew up after this their careers just you know got into t- crazy trajectories <laughs> yeah because I, I think what it has like michelle yo it, it has killian murphy and chris evans you know. uh yeah yeah, so many people, so so many people. <laughs> I have, I have, I have to revisit that film. We've talked about it now recently for like maybe the last three months. And <laughs> Rose I'm Byrne, glad. yeah, so many people. I I need to rewatch it too. I think it's honestly one of the best. Excuse the tangent, listeners. I think it's one of the best looking sci fi movies I've ever seen in terms of like the art direction, and how gorgeous the the, the and scary they make space. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good movie. Um, so mm-hmm. I don't, I didn't really list Dev Patel's uh filmography in order here. I just kind of like made sure to list out things that I thought were important to cover, Evan. So, sure. um, the next one that I wanted to cover was this movie called Lion, and this one has like a similar kind of like miracle setup i guess because it's about like this young boy who gets lost and it's like thanks to the invention of the internet he's able to like i guess like find some kind of home at the end or or get reunited in some way i forget i forget exactly how Um, yeah he's i think he uses google earth he he, he gets he goes missing when he's like five and he gets lost on like a train and then he gets adopted by a Australian couple Nicole Kidman plays his mom in it and uh you know as an adult I think he's he's married or has a girlfriend Rooney Mara in the film and he's trying to track down his family and he's literally using Google Earth to try and figure out where he came from because he doesn't remember it was so long ago and he's yeah he has to like so he somehow figures out where he's from so then he's able to like track down his family and reunite with them yeah, and the movie's very much in, like, two halves, because, like, the first half of the movie is very much, like, the performance of the little boy as the as lead, and he, I forgot what the actor's name was, but he was so very talented, uh, he definitely, yeah. he needed to hold a lot of that first half of the movie together, and, mm-hmm. uh, along with Nicole Kidman, which, you know, she, she's, she's pretty great, too, <laughs> um, but, um, Yeah, she's no slouch. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I I remember like thinking it was pretty good. I I don't I don't remember being bowled over. I felt like it was one of those other like kind of like touchy feely good movies, and you know why it gets dark at the beginning. Certainly, it's just like everything that happens in the second half. It's just like why it, it's a true story. Uh, it's just kind of hard to to take all in. Yeah. I'd agree with that. I think the first half is very compelling. I think the the kid Sonny Pawari just looked him up. I think he is is amazing, and the story of him getting lost and separated from his family is is truly heartbreaking. And it really is a uh, it's tough. But I feel like to your point, the movie in the second half is not a not as strong, and b I just think they did a lot of stuff that they. I don't know. They didn't make it exciting. They made it just kind of like, uh, I don't know. He's kind of going through the motion. Perfunctory. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, I think I'm just rereading my review from that time. Everything in between his separation and reunion is flimsy and plotting. I wrote <laughs> long shots of <laughs> pondering geography on Google earth and artistic flashbacks to his childhood only seem to pout out a narrative with little to say. <laughs> Yeah, well, there so, yeah. you go. <laughs> Wish it had more to say. I think Dev Patel's performance was fine. I don't remember it being mind blowing. I remember it being solid. Right, and it's so so much of the movie's promotional materials are used to sell uh, him his image to sell this movie, 
and it's yes. like he's not necessarily the most like compelling part of it <laughs> he's fine yeah. but uh-huh and um you, you know my if we go down through a few of these movies here and i think more or less that in most of these cases he's fine i mean like Maybe maybe his more recent work I, I'm I'm stronger on. Certainly, I loved him in Green Knight and uh, the personal history of yeah. David Copperfield, which we'll briefly talk about. Was uh, he, he's pretty great in that. Um, but he's he's kind of like in the background of one of his other most famous movies is the best exotic Marigold Hotel, right? As uh, this right. movie, this movie had a sequel. And while he's in it, it's not necessarily about him. Right. He's more of an ancillary character. You know, he he runs the hotel that they're they're living in. And he's, you know, he's he's young and he's trying to, you know, figure his life out and get his act together and straighten the place up. So, yeah, he's not really the main character or even one of the main characters. It's focusing, you know, on the older folks who have moved into this hotel and are trying to, you know start a new chapter of their lives and yeah again i think dev patel is, is fine in it i remember his character being charming i pretty sure i saw the second one i it's been long enough that i can't remember if i actually did or if i'm just mixing up the first one and the second one in my head. <laughs> yeah. yeah i did like, like it i remember no, liking funny, it the first one I'm, I'm i'm looking it up right now evan and it's like Dev Patel, yeah, he he gets he gets a line on on the um the poster as being in the movie, but this is very much more about Judy Dench and Bill Nye and Maggie Smith and the, and the late Tom Wilkinson than it is uh Dev Patel. Um, right, it's, it's it's almost like a who's who of older British actors. Um, right, you know, and we got this this young buck here. <laughs> Def Patel, yeah. who's, you got a, got a few scenes. <laughs> now, what do you think is like the American equivalent to this? Not necessarily like 80 for Brady, even though that's kind of like this like classic actress movie, but maybe like, is it that book club movie, which I haven't seen, you think? Like the, yeah, these maybe. older people like trying to find their youth again. and well. Yeah, or at least, I don't know if it's about finding youth per se, but it's about, you know, living your life as an older person and saying, you know, I'm not dead. <laughs> like, I'm going to have right. romance. I'm going to still keep trying to, you know, change and grow and be a better person. But yeah, I think I think Book Club is the closest equivalent to that. I definitely, I'm thinking of a movie that I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. Um, it has Karen Allen in it. It was an indie movie from a few years ago. That was one of those like starting your life over kind of movies. Um, what was it called? I'm just looking it up here. Uh, oh, well, why Year you by that? the this Sea. Is... <laughs> I think one? this was. The, I think this was it. Year by the Sea. Yeah, she's yeah. like uh, hoping to reclaim who she was before marriage and children, and she goes to Cape Cod and she spends time there to like find herself. <laughs> So what's funny is like I'm like, like one of the other British actresses on the show on on the Best Exotic Marigold Hotel was Penelope Wilton and she's like yeah. probably in my opinion best known for her role on Downton Abbey because she she appeared in like 52 episodes of that and but it's funny like whenever you look at like IMDb they I think they like randomly pick stuff and it's like sometimes it's just like oh why pick this over that oh that here it is they have the best exotic Mary go hotel as like her most what she's known for not downton abbey and i'm like yeah <laughs> how could she not be known for downton abbey but that's, the that's here a weird there. choice <laughs> this be some weird ai recommendation or something like that yeah oh boy <laughs> ai um but yeah Deb patel isn't really the main uh linchpin of the best exotic Mary go hotel movies um now evan i didn't see chappy is how how involved is def patel in that movie i remember him being a medium-sized role in that so he played chappy's the scientist who created chappy um and it's been a while since i've seen it i did try to go back and just kind of like read through my review again and i i remember mentioning briefly (laughs) 
<laughs> Dev Patel was the creator of yeah, you know, Chappie the robot. But I don't, I don't remember how meaty of a role Dev Patel had, other than I think he was convincing as a scientist guy, uh, convincing as someone who created this robot. Um, and I remember enjoying the movie's kind of exploration of you know consciousness and artificial intelligence but like other neil blomkamp movies i think it spends a lot of time on special effects and art direction and not as much time as it should on refining (laughs) parts of the story and closing plot holes and things like that yeah I didn't. I didn't see uh, Blomkamp's newest uh, Gran Turismo either. But <laughs> um, oh yeah, me neither. But I, I kind of, I liked him very early in his career. Like I think District Nine, District Nine, you know, yeah, Chappie. Um, I forget what other movie he made of that era. Elysium. I liked all those movies, yeah. and I feel like I've become a. I have not. <laughs> I fell out of love with Neil Blomkamp because I think he just suffers, like I said, from the problem where he knows how to make a good-looking movie, but he doesn't spend the time to develop the plot. But I, I remember seeing a movie a few years ago that he made that was a horror movie um, that was just straight up terrible. <laughs> it oh, was yeah. not good at all, and I was like, I don't know about this guy. I don't think he's as good a filmmaker as maybe I thought that he was. Demonic, yeah, it was terrible so bad <laughs> <laughs> okay um so moving on from that i saw the personal history of david copperfield and um this is another very british movie and has deb patel in the lead i guess i guess this is a famous story more in england than it is here in america and you know it's not necessarily like a rags to riches story but it's kind of like Oh, Deb Patel's character kind of um, grows up in poverty and he eventually like, I think he moves into like a upper class family eventually and, you know, just goes through his life. And I I guess the the story is um, one of those classics, but um, this was another leading role for him. And I remember being really excited about uh, seeing him. carrying a leading role uh i i almost feel like his image changed like somewhere in between the, the Mary go hotel movies and now like mm-hmm. i i don't know evan I'm, I'm not afraid to say maybe he's more handsome now or you know or you know <laughs> whatever but um he's definitely embraced the like scruff i think you know he's embraced yeah. the like i'm a little bit scruffy i can grow a beard um, and I think that suits him better than the kind of clean shaven kind of boyish look that he was cultivating before that. Right. And so um, that, that certainly uh, inured him to more viewers. And um, when I saw the teasers for the Green Knight, I was really excited to see him in a role like that. I know initially when when we saw the trailers and that movie came like was first teased right before covid you know it was supposed to drop at that south by southwest that was canceled and then it took a long time to eventually come out um i i maybe maybe i was one of the people who thought like the movie was going to be a different movie than what it ended up being um Mm -hmm. i i do love it for what it is even though like it seems like Monkey Man now is the movie that people thought Green Knight was going to be, like this action movie where um, Dev Patel plays like, I don't know, a medieval knight killing people. Um, but no, I, I really love Green Knight, and I'm, I'm happy that we get to spend some time to talk about it. Um, did, were you interested in Green Knight due to his involvement, or were you interested in general? <laughs> Let's start there. Yeah, I mean, I'm like Green Knight was A24, right? Yeah. Was that an A24 movie? Yeah. So I think yeah, I was definitely interested A24, I'm usually interested to see their movies cuz I think they take risks that other studios don't. Uh I think they have a strong emphasis on storytelling. I think they have a good relationship with directors and kind of let them, you know, create their vision and and don't interfere too much. So I was 
that was one perspective. Yeah, Dev Patel, who I like. Um, I liked the idea of him playing a knight and kind of upending, you know, the traditional, you know, white dudes playing knights kind of right. <laughs> narrative. Um, and yeah, I think I was also really interested to see what they were going to do with the story and the art direction. So those all got me interested to see the Green Knight. What about you? Yeah, um, I, I was on board with with the the imagery. Um, I, I guess to note that I had direct, I had interviewed uh, director David Lowry before. Uh, I had a chance mm. to sit with him with, with, before um, the TIFF premiere of The Man and the Gun. The old man and the gun, I think it's called the, the Robert Redford uh, finale film, the last film that he'd uh, appear in. And um, I, I liked that movie. I liked the ghost story, even though, you know, it had its plotting moments. Um, I really, <laughs> yeah, Max, I think I, you were on spoiler piece to talk about that movie, if I recall oh, correctly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I liked uh, his Pete the Dragon. Uh, oh, me too. I thought that so, was really good. So I, I'm generally a fan of his movie. So I was like, oh, yeah, him, Deb Patel, this kind of theme. I'm like, yeah, I'm on board with that. Um, so I was, I was disappointed with how long we had to wait to eventually see it. But, um, yeah, I, 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 I guess no surprise, Evan. I really enjoy Green Knight. I, um, I, I bought it on 4K and then I bought like the, the super souped up uh a24 edition that they released i guess later which was the same 4k transfer but they added like some extras to it and i was like yeah all right i'll buy it again <laughs> <laughs> yeah those a24 dvd prices are no joke from what i was just and somebody i know on twitter was recently commenting on this <laughs> it's like oh yeah the stuff crazy. they sell directly from their website is like whoa the markup on that <laughs> Yeah, like I think like they're they're doing their release of Stop Making Sense, the Talking Head documentary that they like a concert movie that they released last year, and you know the yep. the, the the disc is like fifty dollars. I'm like, whoa, that's steep, you know. Mm -hmm. I I, I'll, I guess I can listen to the music. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, but no, I I think like Green Knight really allowed Dev Patel to flex his acting muscle you know he was he was in the lead and helped to had some like really great supporting roles from uh alicia verkander and um barry kugan was in that movie um i i i it's one of those movies that i like to joke that's a christmas movie <laughs> it, 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 i guess it's not so much of a joke because it kind of is in a sense um you know how <laughs> people pe people like to joke oh die hard or uh, Eyes Wide Shut are Christmas movies, but um, I don't know. I I think Green Knight does fit the bill, um, but this one, this one, of course, is like he is a knight. I think he's like the son of one of the head knights. Is a King Arthur, right? And he wants to make a name for himself. Nephew of Arthur, he, I think maybe. All right, is that it? Might be. He, he when he wants to make a name for himself when this creature comes in. Uh, during Christmas, and he's like, "Oh, I have a game for you." And he's like, "Whatever you do to me, um, a year later, um, I expect you to come to my place and allow me to do to you." And mm -hmm. you know, laughing at this proposal, Dev Patel's character goes up and he's like, "Oh, I want to make a big show of this, and you know, I'm gonna cut this guy's head off, you know, and see what happens." And you know, he does, and then the guy. You know, it's cool. <laughs> he's he's not he's not mortal. He he's still living. So he's like, all right, I expect you to come back a year later, and uh, come uh, fa face this uh, game. And and uh, I don't know. It, it you know like how it's gonna end, but it does like a really clever and interesting journey. And you know, and then it nails you with a really awesome ending i think i think it's a probably it, it ties the whole movie together really um this, this idea of you know seeing your future and um you know being yeah okay <laughs> um kind, kind of the opposite of one of my favorite movies evan which is arrival which is this the idea that being shown your future and then 
knowing that that's your future and still wanting to go through with it anyways so yeah actually it's funny i thought you were going to say a different movie because i I remember it being kind of thematically similar to last temptation of christ and the whole like what could be kind of (laughs) part of that movie if you've seen it Oh, I, I haven't. I know that's one that I want to catch up with because I know William Defoe is incredible in it from what I've heard. So Yeah, he is. So okay, so that's that's cool. Yeah, Arrival is a great movie and I, I liked that aspect of it. I don't know. I I really liked uh aspects of Green Knight. I think I struggle sometimes with things that are kind of fantasy or more kind of uh I don't really know what the right word is for the type of narrative, but basically I feel like I really dug the art direction of it. Mm -hmm. I think it looked great. I think I liked Dev Patel quite a bit, but I don't know. It just, it didn't land with me in the same way as other people. I don't know. Maybe (laughs) I'm I'm struggling because it's been a little while since I've seen it um, to like have specific critiques of it. But yeah, I I don't think I quite loved it as much as like say you or my co-hosts on spoiler beast did. No, it's definitely a, a mood piece, if you will. And I, I know, like, I would say that a ghost story is very much that way, too, obviously, because, you know, it's arguable how much actually happens in that movie. I don't know if you if you're willing to go on the on the weird and strange journey. It, yeah, it, there was another movie that reminded me of and I, it's probably because of the Giants and, and the Green Knight, but there's like french animated film called like um forbidden planet and that one is really weird and um this brought a lot of that same kind of imagery in my mind but um yeah oh yeah it's, it's 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 really cool um really strange bizarre <laughs> animated film um it's on it's on criterion line so um gotcha yeah maybe that was what it was for me i mean i feel like i for me there's certain movies where i'm like this just became too weird for me <laughs> mm-hmm. i think i strange, kind of strange, like strange for being strange type of type way i think you're hitting the nail on the head yeah I, I think i don't respond as well to movies that are just weird for the sake of being weird or gross for the sake of being gross or you know what i mean where where they're just i feel like they're just pushing the envelope but they're not not I, I, well, let me say that i don't think the green knight is this way i think for right. me it probably just gets weird and, and too weird for me um but yeah i don't love movies that i feel like are a weird for the sake of being weird or gross for the sake of being gross just to see how gross they can take it or how much they can do it without some actual point <laughs> right no, I get it. And you're not the first person who would um, not be fully in the bag for the Green Knight. I remember letting some family members borrow this movie and they were like, they hated it <laughs> when they gave it back to me. They were like, they're like, why would you recommend this to me? I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Was it the the guilty hand job in, in the movie? Uh, <laughs> I know the feeling, Max. I know I definitely recommended movies to my family that they were not. I, I think this comes with being a film person and loving movies and watching movies. And sometimes you enjoy stuff that's just too weird for other people. Like I remember at some point in college, my family was my family is a very early adopter of Netflix. Uh, and yeah. So we had the DVDs coming in like, I think as early as like 1998 or 1999. We were like already getting the dvds from them and at a certain point a couple years later my parents are just like you know what your your stuff you want to watch is weird get your own netflix account (laughs) 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 so i did i had my own where i was getting the dvds and then i was like okay this is much better i can watch all the weird stuff i want to watch and then they can watch the stuff they want to (laughs) watch Yeah, you know, well, which is funny. Maybe we should look at that into that one one day, Evan. Is like how much like cinephiles were born based on the availability of Netflix, right? Because I mean, like the yeah. streaming age is weird because it's not exactly like it's very curated now of like what you can actually see. But when right you when you could see anything when renting DVDs from Netflix, it was it was something else. Oh, totally, and it was great too. Like I would end up like being like okay you know what i'm gonna watch everything in bruce willis's filmography that i hadn't seen and i did that i literally just had like bruce willis movie after (laughs) bruce willis movie i just went down the list like 
And I feel like you can't quite do that anymore because you have no idea where the hell things are streaming. They might not be available. Uh, and it's just not quite the same, especially now that Netflix actually discontinued its DVD rental business. Right. Yeah, that's it's it's kind of sad, and 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 it, yeah, it's 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 a different way of how people can get into these movies. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I I mean, I I guess Evan and I saw that uh, Dev Patel appeared in the wonderful story of Henry Sugar, which was uh, Wes Anderson's Oscar win at the Oscars. Um, I I I'd heard from some uh family members and stuff that they enjoyed the short i guess it's 40 minutes long um mm, i don't okay. i don't know how much deb patel is actually in it but um i'm i'm more excited for uh monkey man to come out which is um just a few weeks now from when we're recording this and uh excited to see not only what he brings to the table as a director, but, um, you know, another leading role for him as an action man. There were some people out there who wanted to maybe see Deb Patel as a potential James Bond character. And um, I think this is pretty close to that without actually being James Bond. So, uh, mm. yeah, this, this seems pretty cool. Yeah, that would have been cool. I mean, I, I like that uh, Monkey Man has a Jordan Peele producer uh, credit going on here because i'm a big fan of jordan peele's movies so if he's if he's back in this one i'm definitely interested to see it uh in addition to dev patel stepping into the director's chair yeah definitely jordan peele's involvement as a producer is has helped the profile of this film and big big time and um i i'm glad that it's gonna get theatrical exhibition you know i think i think i heard originally that it was rumored to be like a netflix movie and you know so many of those movies are just like oh well they're here and they're gone um but yeah i i think the theatrical experience you know still makes a movie seem important in a way yes Mm mm-hmm um but is there anything else you want to add on dev patel before we go to the what we've been watching section evan no i th- i think we covered it although although i'm seeing that monkey man and one of the people in it is charles copley so that's interesting reuniting him after he worked with him on uh chappy so i guess that was a positive experience <laughs> yeah <laughs> give us give him more work and they can work together no, I, I'm excited to to see Monkey Man and um, much uh, more exciting movies from Dev Patel and his future. Um, he's a he's a talented actor that uh, I enjoy watching. And you know, ha- having done this episode of you, Evan, I'm like, oh, I need to go back and rewatch some, probably Slumdog Millionaire. I want to watch Sunshine. So you know, this 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 has been a fruitful conversation of me wanting to add <laughs> movies that I want to rewatch. Yeah add them back into your your queue <laughs> to oh, yeah. bring it back to netflix <laughs> all right so um before we go into what we've been watching um evan and i would like to share where you can find us and where you can find out what it's the pictures is doing um first of all i have updated the podcast website it's the pictures podcast.com if you go there it looks a little uh fancier now i i decided it to does take some time to go into that and uh, thanks, Evan, and, uh, and and make it look a little bit nicer. Um, you'll be able to find our catalog of episodes there. I think I think I made it so like uh, up to like two hundred or one hundred and fifty episodes are there. Um, so you can find a lot of episodes on the website. Um, certainly, we have a large archive. And um, what else? You can find me on Blue Sky at mhcoville.bsky.social. Um, the podcast is there. Um, w- podcast is also on Twitter X. Um, it's the Pick Pod. Um, let's see. What else did, did I Did you mention the mention? newsletter? The newsletter, yes. But before we get there, Evan, where can people find you if they want to talk to you? Uh, yeah, they can find me on social media as Real Recon. That's real as in film reel. And then I'm over as the Spoiler Piece Theater, the podcast, which you can find anywhere that you get podcasts. 
Yeah, and uh, we haven't plugged the spoiler piece too much here, but like, if you want to be up to the date with movies, like the hottest minute, you want to be listening <laughs> to the spoiler piece because like they get all the new releases and um, get uh, thoughts and reviews on them for you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we cover new releases. We try to cover a good spread of things that are both, you know, the blockbuster stuff that you want to see and also the indie stuff. Uh, stuff directed by you know women, people of color, LGBTQ plus films. Uh, try to try to mix it up over there. Awesome. Um, then yeah, so Evan was mentioning um, the newsletter. That's it's the pictures.substack.com. You can come subscribe for free if you'd like and um, get newsletters delivered right to your email inbox. You know. It's hard to uh, keep track of where everybody is socially these days, whether it be X or Blue Sky or Threads or whatever. But if you come and subscribe <laughs> to the email service, you can get uh, my work directly to you in your email inbox. Not only did I talk about these 80s movies this past week, but I shared my X-Men 97 review for RogerEbert.com. Um, another nostalgia piece, but I, I ended up really enjoying that. And you can read uh, more about that at uh, rogerebert.com. Um, yeah, I guess that's going to move us into what we've been watching. Evan, you uh, had quite a bit on your chart here, and I'm looking forward to hearing about it. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of TV as of late. Uh, some rewatches. So we've been rewatching some shows on Apple TV. Uh, I've been watching uh, Loot. I just rewatched the first season of Loot, which is a very funny show. It has Maya Rudolph, uh, Ron Funches, Joel Kim Booster, Nat Faxon, uh, MJ Rodriguez. It's a really great cast. It's a really fun workplace comedy by Alan Yang, who did Parks and Rec and Master of None. Um, and the premise is Maya Rudolph's character is kind of like married she's married to adam scott who's a billionaire and then they get a divorce and she has you know half of his fortune and she decides to go to this foundation that she has that she forgot she even started uh <laughs> and work there as an employee and you know it's about her being like ultra rich and like trying to get involved in philanthropy and it's it's really funny and really charming and uh it's coming up on its second season which i'm looking forward to checking out so i rewatched that uh both in preparation and because we've been kind of going through at our house you know watching some comedies with my mother-in-law who lives with us and uh you know you you know encouraging her to check out shows and saying okay let's sit down and watch them together so we watched that and uh yeah, Evan, another it's comedy kind of funny, like, uh, like the premise of Lou uh, kind of reminds me of Shit's creek a little bit of course like in this case one's a divorce one's a uh losing all your money <laughs> but like trying to start a new life in a, a place that you're very unfamiliar with yes yeah it's it's good it's it's i was just gonna say that i feel like apple tv right now has a lot of shows that i like so it's definitely worth checking yeah, them out and subscribing it's getting there too right because at first people were like oh it doesn't have too much but like i think what they do have is really good yeah, I feel like they invest their money smartly in things. You know, they have some shows that are, I would argue they're shows that start out really strong and kind of, you know, peter out toward the end. Where they're not great at some of, the, some of their shows are not great at the ending and wrapping it all up in a satisfying way. But I think overall, they're like really solid and their comedies, you know, I really enjoy between Loot, Shrinking, Platonic. These are all shows that I very much enjoyed that are comedies and they actually made me laugh in a way. And yeah. I can't say that for like many other comedies out there that I try and watch. So and, and, I, yeah. and I love that you mentioned when you mentioned comedies on Apple TV plus, you didn't write ahead and say Ted Lasso because that is what people would think when you think comedies on Apple TV plus. So yeah, it's fun to hear you like mentioning some of their other comedies. Yeah. And I love Ted Lasso. Don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a great show, but I think, yeah, people really should be checking out some of the shows like loot and shrinking and, uh, what was the other one? Oh, Platonic, which is one I feel like not a lot of people talked about. So, right. yeah. So, yeah, Apple TV, comedies, loot, watch it. Shrinking. Have you seen Shrinking, Max? No, but this was like a big time because it was like Harrison Ford and TV role, right? Yes. Yeah, Harrison Ford is great in it. Jason Siegel is. It's kind of similar in that, like, 
it's a little more it's a little more serious as a comedy i'd say it's more like a dramedy because it's about jason siegel he's a therapist whose wife died and he's trying to kind of pick up the pieces and he works in an office where harrison ford is a therapist and he's his mentor and jessica williams also works in the office they're colleagues um and friends and yeah it's more serious for sure but it's also really funny and it in a similar way to loot has a lot of different characters hanging out together uh and and having fun which i really like about it you know it's like they have different people like jason siegel has jessica williams and harrison ford at work and he has different relationships with both of them but then harrison ford and jessica williams get into hijinks together and you know there's his neighbor uh you know there's stuff with her and she hangs out with jessica williams so it's like (laughs) it's nice seeing all these characters hang out and have fun and laugh together uh, in play in ways you wouldn't necessarily think on the surface. Yeah. Uh, But you, you mentioned that you watched uh, a very recent documentary, right? Yes, I did. Uh, I know a lot of people have been talking about quiet on set, which is uh, quiet on set, the dark side of kids TV It's a documentary, it's available on uh, Max to watch, which is all about Nickelodeon in the late 90s and early 2000s, um, and about the toxic workplace culture there from them hiring actual pedophiles that worked on set, like two people who were, you know, arrested and convicted (laughs) as pedophiles that worked on shows like, you know, All That and The Amanda Show and uh, all the different shows there to dan schneider who was the mastermind behind a lot of those shows and the kind of you know gross jokes that he you know insisted that the child actors do and the you know very toxic workplace the misogyny inappropriate jokes inappropriate relationships uh and just the harm that both people who worked as like you know writers and people on the show and then specifically the child actors and all the trauma that they went through and it's as a warning it's not an easy watch um you know i've watched my fair share of things like this like things like surviving r kelly and finding neverland and all those kinds of kind of long form documentaries about uh sexual assault and abuse and it's definitely you know it's it's up there it's it's not an easy watch but i think it's a vital watch and for anyone who grew up like us you know in the 90s and 2000s watching nickelodeon kind of enjoying the shows but having no idea what kind of you know bad stuff was happening under the surface because you know a lot of this stuff got aired you know following me too but there's still a lot of toxicity (laughs) And awful things happening in workplace sure, in away. Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, Evan. Like, I, I've I've heard like things through the grapevine of like, um, certainly bad experiences. Let's put that. That's putting it lightly, right? Bad experiences right. at Nickelodeon. Um, but, uh, yeah. I don't know if I've known uh, too much about it. Now there was that biography. I forget who put it, which who which actress put it out, but she, it was like very striking title. Like I'm glad my mom died. And yes, I think, she, I think she was a Nickelodeon star as well. Yep, they talked to her in this documentary. She's one of the people that they interview, and one of the people who dealt with, you know, the toxic environment there, and really did a number on her. Um, you know, via by way of Dan Schneider, the showrunner on all of these different shows. And uh, yeah, it's it's rough. It's rough. It really is. I feel so terrible for these these people and what, how they had to grow up in this environment and how they are, you know, pushed to do things that they were uncomfortable with, things that made them feel terrible about themselves, uh, things that really messed them up you know, for their, for their for the rest of their lives, like things that triggered severe insecurities, uh and trauma it's uh i feel i feel so bad for them and i'm glad they have a chance to tell their story in this documentary and kind of air all of these things yeah it, in a way like evan I, I i know like a lot of these stars are made like through disney and nickelodeon obviously you yeah. look no further than like ryan gosling being a former mickey mouse club member 
Um, but it's just like I never follow the trajectory of like, like, like really uh, personally. I don't know personally, but like knowing these people as like child actors to where they are today. So it's like it's shocking to me where people are like, oh yeah, Ariana Grande was on Nickelodeon or like yeah. I had no uh, clue she was. <laughs> yeah, right. I had no clue. Or the, the, like, I guess Zendaya was like on like Disney or or something originally. I was like, really? I was like, I just knew that she like appeared in a Spider-Man movie and, you know, she she made it big on Euphoria. Like, that's where I thought she like really like made it big. But yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, I Yeah, this, this sounds like a, an informative watch. I mean, obviously you said that uh, – the the abuse is not easy to watch so um yeah so content warning if you're thinking about checking out it is four episodes so it's where, where four, is like can be watched uh you can check it out on max i think it's okay. technically like an id tv thing but i okay. think that's under the max umbrella that's where i watched it all right like uh, as as we go forward not not max as a me max but like formerly yeah. hbo max <laughs> formerly formerly hbo max yeah, yeah. I, maybe i embrace calling it max a little too quickly <laughs> <laughs> um did you have anything else you wanted to share evan or uh, no that's it i'd love to hear about what you've been watching okay so i think um i briefly mentioned the roaring 20s on the last episode so i won't be going into that but um i for some strange reason, I had this urge to watch the Criterion channel, and um, I shouldn't think it's that strange because I do like I pay a yearly subscription for this thing, but like, yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think I enjoy the idea of it more than I often like turn it on and watch a movie. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't, I guess I don't mind like supporting it, and I'm glad like if I want to watch those movies that they're there for me. But like, I guess like with having a extensive physical media library, like I have maybe some of the um, staples that are available on the Criterion channel, whether it be like, I don't know, Ingmar Bergman movies or um, Wong Kar Wai or Kara Kurosawa, what have you. I have a lot of those movies. So um, I usually get excited about the stuff that, you know, they add like as, as theme uh, stuff. And every month they come out of uh, different themes that are really good and um without getting into the controversy of jonathan glazer um one of the uh the movies that was added to the platform was um well he all his movies up to i don't think like under the skin was added um but a lot of his early stuff like birth was on there and um sexy beast was added and this was one that was like really high on, on the charts. Like they could, they show you like what, what they, what everyone's been watching lately. And this was up there and I was like, Oh, well this looks interesting. It's not too long. And, um, it's, it's a pretty like fun movie and it has this actor who I wasn't too familiar with. Um, his name is Ray Winstone. And, <laughs> Ray Winstone. Yeah. And he's like a um, he's, he's retired. He likes to say he like lives out and on his villa, and he has he has a nice life with um, his girlfriend, and they hang out with their friends all the time. You know, th- things are great. And um, he gets a call that one of his buddies is coming down. And you get the sense from everybody there that they're really like tense about this. They don't want this buddy to come. And in comes to town is uh, Don Logan, played by Ben Kingsley. And Kingsley's phenomenal in this. The movie was nominated for an Oscar, I think, based on his like supporting role. Other than like no one else probably knew what this movie was, but he's so good that it and. (laughs) <laughs> it earned an oscar nomination um but yeah he comes to town and he's like what do you mean you're retired you're not retired you 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 got to come do a job with me and there's this like back and forth for like maybe 30 40 minutes of the movie that's like really like tense and like kingsley is able to bring this like really high tension to his performance that like you don't know what this guy is capable of like even though like these they seem like buddy buddy and he's down there because he wants them to like join him for this job they're just like really on edge at at all times and um 
you know, it, it loses a little bit of steam in like the last 25 minutes or so. But um, yeah, it, it's a pretty uh, interesting watch if you've, if you've never seen Sexy Beast. And, no, I haven't, but it sounds yeah. good based on your description. And I love Ben Kingsley. Yeah, no, it, it's, 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 pretty, it's a pretty neat movie. It's only it's only an hour and a half. Um, so, um, yeah, check that one out. And the other one I watched, this was more of a sense like I've seen it like um, places like Shudder and other places where like it's been hard to watch. I was like, well, before it's gone and like I can't watch it again, let me see what the big deal is with The Devils, which is a, a, a classic like band movie. Um, Rated X, I see, yeah, from yeah. 1971. <laughs> Yeah, like like you you never like get to see this normally, and like I guess like even the cut that they have like online is the is like a censored cut based uh, different than um, Ken Russell's uh, preferred cut. Um, if you go online, you can like read the differences, and yeah, they get like even more um, ridiculous. Um, but um, yeah, this it's this idea that there's. Um, this uh father for the church who you know he's promiscuous promiscuous he has, he has sex with par- parishioners and you know he's 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 kind of like flaunting his sexiness and like he's not really the guy who's like hiding away right and then being chased he, he's he's living it up if you will and one of the nuns at the convent nearby played by vanessa redgrave so like becomes infatuated with him and like dreams about him and like you know uh there's a lot of overt tones to like sexual repression of course right because you know nuns are supposed to be like um celibate too right yeah and, uh-huh. and um so i guess like there's this like political subplot in this evan where like the the church wants to like destroy this city and they think that if he's still in power they can't destroy it so like they chase this like witch hunt where like the nun says that she was like sexually assaulted by him and he's bewitched her and like he's a devil and so the church goes and um you know tries to take him down and uh just everything goes wild um I, I it's funny like there's been proponents of this movie that say like it's it's a worthy movie and yes yeah, certainly my argument is for like film uh to be able to be seen whether it's good or bad but like i didn't think that this was necessarily all that good um <laughs> like i guess i'm happy to have had the opportunity to watch it but like i don't know evan i don't understand it, what all the fuss is about <laughs> yeah I, I mean like maybe like when it came out and like the the early 70s it was probably this like and, and that's the case of a lot of these movies don't get me wrong like, even like watching midnight cowboy which got an x back then like now it's like yeah all right yeah he, feels he, pretty like, tame yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah compared to when it came out then um yeah and certainly this this has elements in it that are like oh yeah maybe maybe that still wouldn't go over well today but it's not exactly the um I guess the market depravity that it was known for back then, um, and of, of course the the whole the when you watch the movie you realize you, you're trying to think to yourself who exactly is the devil in this movie right yeah um so the title is kind of like a play on the actual movie itself so um no I I guess it was interesting and like if if you've like thought to yourself like you've always wanted a chance to watch it and you know chances are like i'll get this up this podcast up pretty quickly and like you can you can catch on criterion before it leaves the service if it interests you and you know it's it's an it's an opportunity to see a movie that's not readily available um i just wasn't crazy about it fair enough yeah i don't i don't know if it's my kind of movie but (laughs) yeah i guess i understand the impetus though to to check something out that's hard to find and you know available for a limited time like they like to do on criterion yeah yeah that's what it is right it's like it's funny evan it's like i'm more drawn to 
uh, the movies that are like expiring, like that's the list that I want to watch of of what's on the service as opposed to like what's always been there or like a gem that I want to get to because like I'm like, oh, well, now that I won't be able to watch it, I better buck up right. and find some time to watch it. Yeah, well, it could be gone for, I mean, for good. I'm putting in quotation marks because it's kind of like, you know, it might disappear from streaming for a while. And, you know, there, in some of these cases, there's no physical release to go back and find. Uh, either it's like out of print on DVD or it just doesn't exist on DVD or didn't make it to Blu-ray or whatever, you know, so I get it. All right. I think that just about wraps up our uh, our episode, Evan. This is our, our first one uh, doing uh, me and you together. I, th- I think yeah. it went pretty well. Yeah, me too. It was a lot of fun. And um, we will be back in two weeks with another episode, and we'll 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 see what we're gonna game plan and figure out. And uh, we look forward to speaking with all of you again. Yeah, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. All right, thanks, Evan. Bye. Bye.